Here with reaction and analysis of the media spin on Cardinal Burke's eviction is associate editor of The Spectator UK and host of the Holy Smoke podcast, Damien Thompson. He joins us from London. Damien, first of all, your reaction to this rogue action by Pope Francis, really unprecedented to rescind Cardinal Raymond Burke's Vatican residence and his pension. What is the message being sent here? I think my reaction was the same as yours, Raymond. This is petty, vindictive, verging on the sadistic, and I emphasize embarrassing because I think even the Pope's closest allies wish that he hadn't done something so petty. He humiliated, not for the first time, a cardinal who actually is very well liked in Rome, even by people who don't share his theological perspective. A cardinal who, yes, is critical of this pontificate, is critical of actions by the Pope, but is scrupulous about never crossing certain lines, never flirting with set of acantism, and is personally uncomfortable if people attack the Pope personally in his presence, mm -hmm. which is not actually true of all cardinals. And you and I, yeah. I think, both know, having met him, he's a warm and holy man, and it is so sad yeah. to see this being done to him. But I think we have to look at the reasons why this happened and why Bishop Strickland has just been subjected to this Kafka-esque treatment. Connect the dots between Strickland and Archbishop Ganswein, who was told to leave Rome uh, and return to Germany without given, being given an assignment at all. We're going to be talking to him in a moment. Indeed. I think there have been so many injustices. We're talking about the case of Cardinal Burke, the case of Bishop Strickland, Archbishop Ganswein, and, of course, the very different case of Father Marco Rupnik, who utterly scandalously mm -hmm. is still a priest, who is accused, he's a close ally friend of his patron, mm -hmm. Pope Francis, is accused of grotesque sexual and sacrilegious acts against women religious, which mm -hmm. are too disgusting to be described on a program no, like this. Heinous. It would be too distressing mm -hmm. for your viewers. I doubt that many of them even know precisely what is alleged. There are no canonical mm -hmm. proceedings against him. Um, we're still waiting for them. And so far as I know, the Pope hasn't even met any of the women who claim they were so horrendously abused by Rupnik. So there is mm -hmm. a growing perception of injustice. And as a result, people, including leading cardinals, who were seen as very close allies of the Pope, are beginning to sort of walk away from the scene of the crime, as it were. They don't want to go into the next conclave too closely associated with Francis, particularly if, like Tucho Fernandez, for example, and you may think this is ridiculous, mm -hmm. but they have ambitions to be papabile. Uh, Damien, papal biographer uh, and uh, obviously uh, mouthpiece now for the Vatican, Austin Ivory, uh, seems almost giddy writing a piece in where's, wherepeteris.com. Ivory recounts a meeting he recently had with Pope Francis just this week where they discussed the removal of Cardinal Burke. I'm going to put it on the screen. He writes, in the course of our conversation, Francis told me he had decided to remove Cardinal Burke's cardinal privileges, his apartment and salary, because he had been using those privileges against the church. After I came out from Santa Marta, I found it on a traditional news site. The meaning of this is obvious to anyone covering the Vatican. The leaker is motivated by animus against the Pope. Their story reported that at a meeting on November 20th with the heads of dicasteries, the Pope had told them, Cardinal Burke is my enemy, so I'm taking away his apartment and stipend. I knew this quote was pure fiction. Pope Francis would never conduct a personal vendetta, end quote. Damien, so Ivory says he knew that uh, quote about Burke was pure fiction. Uh, then I I'd like your, your reaction, given what we know of recent history. He goes to great pains also to demand obedience of the pope. And he conflates questioning, legitimate questioning, of departures from church practice with papal disobedience. I'll give you the floor. I don't think we should give Austin Ivory the honor of taking his words too seriously. He's an operator. I've been watching him operate for over 20 years. I've seen him behave in the same obsequious way to other figures in the church. It really would be dangerous for me to talk too much about him because we go back too far. And mm. my opinion of him is well known and his opinion of me is very well known. But let me just emphasize one point that was made to me by a very well-connected person in the Vatican diplomatic corps 
These are the last days for the very hardline Team Francis people. Cardinals and various other bishops are peeling off from this pontificate because its blunders have been so egregious and the behavior of the Pope has on occasion been so cruel, they don't want to be associated with him, as I said before. It leaves a little hard core of supporters whom the next Pope, liberal, conservative, whatever, will want to have nothing to do with. And so mm. they're enjoying their last moment of power. And mm. let them gloat because before too long, they won't have the opportunity to do so. Damien, uh, Cardinal Burke spoke to Francis Rocha of The Wall Street Journal this week. And um, the Cardinal told Rocha he's heard nothing of this matter from Rome. Quote, people can draw their own conclusions about why the Holy Father told this to Austin Ivory and not to the person concerned. Damien, your thoughts, your reaction. Why would, why would the Pope and the Vatican use Austin Ivory as the official mouthpiece and not call the man himself, who has served the Vatican, by the way, faithfully for a decade? Because this is the Pope's modus operandi. I mean, when Ivory says that the Pope would never talk about his enemies, I can see Jesuits all over Latin America, all over the world, Argentinians just laughing at the thought that Pope Francis, as he now is, doesn't use that sort of language when talking about people he dislikes. He's the air turns blue, according to people who work in the Curia, when Francis is angry. So please don't expect us to mm. take that seriously. But the, uh, to address yeah. your wider point, yeah. you talk about the Pope and the Vatican. There isn't really a Vatican under this dictatorship. Various curial officers, various prefects and, and secretaries of dicasteries, as they're now called, their only interest is in keeping in, at the moment, with their boss, because they know he punishes people ruthlessly and without warning, and that doing things without warning, in a cruel way, I'm sorry to say, is actually one of his signatures. No, it's it's heartbreaking to watch this, and you know, there's writing today in the Italian media oh, about the 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 withdrawing of a cardinal's pension. This is a pension that he earned. He's now a retired cardinal, uh, living in Rome, and now you take away his pension. But on what grounds? Now, the the if you believe what Ivory said, the Pope believes that somehow. Cardinal Raymond Burke is using this to create disunity, to oppose the church. It, it, it seems to me, and look, I, I, I see all the people in the church and hear from many of them. Cardinal Raymond Burke is probably the most careful, judicious, uh, charitable uh, man out there. And he has been so deliberate in the way he poses questions and I think is trying to warn the Pope that he may be about mm. to exceed what the church would allow, which is the job of a cardinal to advise the Pope. I'll give you the floor. Exactly. You're precisely right. And let's look at the context. I was in Rome at the end of October when there were two disasters for the Pope. The first disaster was that the synod on synodality basically collapsed. Why? Because people were ground down by the sheer boredom and the inanity of the meaningless talk about synodality, which, by the way, is the official joke word of 2023. Nobody will use it next year because they're so sick of it. You saw these cardinals wheeled out at press conference having to talk about synodality. You could see they were, they were absolutely wilting with boredom as they did so. The whole thing was a fiasco. And it was particularly a fiasco because in the last week of the synod, we had the story break and be confirmed on the same day of the incarnation, the disgraceful incarnation, the disgusting Marco Rudnick, uh, which forced the Pope to backtrack, though, as I say, he still hasn't initiated any canonical proceedings. That was a disaster. And you have this little Praetorian guard of propagandists masquerading as journalists. And they tried to suppress the story for over 24 hours. I was walking around Rome, constantly checking my phone, thinking they have to have put something on social media about this huge story that's broken and being confirmed. Not a word for over 24 hours. So you had two big humiliations. And I remember thinking at the time, the Pope's going to hit out at the traditionalists, American traditionalists mm -hmm. in particular. What form will it take? Now we know.
Damien, we will leave it there. And you can find Damien Thompson's commentary at spectator.co.uk. And follow his ex-post at Holy Smoke. Thank you, Damien.